<clears throat> okay, so welcome to your, I was gonna say candlelit yen, but I just got a new light so you guys can actually see me in this. So hopefully it's candlelit or um, relaxing and dark for you. Uh, you will need a couple of pillows for today's class. So I'm gonna demo with a bolster, but you can always, um, use two pillows instead of a bolster if you don't have one. Um, and then blocks can also be used as a substitute for bolster pillows. They're just not quite as comfy. So um, whatever you have available will work. And then you're welcome to put any playlist on, just finding some really relaxing music. Uh, you can always use any of my playlists or just anything um, that you prefer, okay? So we're gonna start with um, your bolster or pillows in supported bridge. So start to bring yourself down onto your back. Soles of your feet root down onto your mat. And then as you press into your feet, start to lift your hips and then just slide your bolster or pillows underneath the back of your hips. So bolster should be just underneath the sacrum. And if you're uncertain of if you have it in the right place, just take your hands onto your belly, fingertips onto hip bones, heels of your hands onto your ribs. And just slowly feel your hip bones pull slightly towards your ribs. A really, really gentle contraction of your core. And then feet can stay hip width distance, or if it feels better, you can always walk your feet out wide and drop your knees a little bit through center. Hands can stay landed over top of your belly, or you're welcome to drape your hands down beside you, or even bring your arms overhead to a cactus or a diamond shape. And as you just settle into this pose, you start to notice the duality of your breath. How half of your breath is this expansive expression of self. And how the other half of your breath is a softening and a release closer towards center. And that your breath is composed of these two essentially opposing forces. There's an energy to the inhale as you draw air in and press the sides of your rib cage out. And there's a sinking or a melting of the exhale as you just allow your body to gently make its way closer to the center line. As you inhale, you'll feel the lift and rise of your chest. And as you exhale, the heaviness, the grounding of your shoulder blades and your hips and your feet. And you just tap into these two very different sensations and how in just a single breath, there is room for you to be both light and heavy, expanding and contracting, ebbing, and flowing. The yin yoga practice comes from a Taoist background, deeply rooted in the yin yang symbol. When we practice yin, we are calling upon the feminine side of this symbol, the moon energy.
energy, the coolness, the compassion, the grace, the slower energy that really calls of us to be present. But just like the yin-yang symbol, there is a portion of the yang practice within this one. There are opportunities to find strength within the softness, to find resilience in those moments of patience, of understanding, of kindness, to find courage and the ability to hold strong when so much of us just wants to run or move or shift. And so tonight's practice is all going to be about that duality. Our ability to hold both sides of ourselves, both sides of each emotion and sensation and experience, and to know that this is fullness. That we never need to achieve fully something, but instead to just find the balance between the black and the white, the strong and the soft, what we perceive to be the good and the bad or the right and the wrong. Take a deep breath in through your nose. Fill all the way up. And then exhale out through your mouth. Feel your body sink heavier into the support beneath you. Take two more breaths just like that. Inhaling through your nose. Soft exhale through your mouth. One more time, breathe in. And exhale, breathe out. Keep your left foot planted. Start to float your right foot off your mat and bring your knee in towards your chest. Hands can land on top of your shin or behind your hamstring if shin isn't available. Draw your right knee more to the side of your rib cage. Feel your hip bones. Pull up towards your bottom two ribs lengthening out the lower back, and then slowly start to extend your left heel away from your body. Maybe fully straightening out that left leg, but it can always have a soft and gentle bend to the knee. Supported wind relieving pose. The pillows beneath your sacrum and beneath your hips will allow you the room to come a little bit deeper into the shape without really having to try. Can you allow yourself to find depth without having to control or force it? Allowing yourself to come into a whole lot of sensation really gently. Often when we push is when we find that depth or that juicy stretch or sensation. But can you just soften into your fingertips? Allow gravity to invite you into this pose and release the urgency to physically manipulate your body to have to go deeper. Trust in the yin energy to just slow down and that over time your body will land exactly where it needs to. And 
Notice anywhere that you're holding tension in the front of your left hip, in the backs of your arms or grips of your fingers. You can just gently soften into that area to acknowledge the tension and lengthening happening in the left hip and the compression in the right whilst also allowing the rest of the body to just be soft and heavy. Gently start to bring your right knee back over top of your chest and gently release the sole of your right foot down. Notice the sensation in your left hip and now start to bend your left knee in towards your chest and feel that sensation fade as you begin to straighten out the right leg. Hands can interlace wherever is comfortable on your left hamstring or shin. Notice how the sensation has shifted from your left side body now over to the right. Bringing in balance to the two sides of your physical body. and start by acknowledging the sensations that you feel. The expansion and the lengthening and maybe even some of the resistance of the front of your right hip and the compression and contraction and maybe even some resistance in the front of your left hip. Gently take a scan of your body and anywhere other than these areas that you just saw and acknowledge, can you allow them to just be soft, relaxed? Even your fingertips don't have to grip so hard. Your skin on your face doesn't have to crunch up. And you can just start to offer yourself some room to unwind. Offer yourself room to notice the sounds of your breath. Offer yourself room to just ride the ebbs and the flows of your inhales and exhales. A reminder of the duality of this practice.
Whenever you feel your mind slipping elsewhere or distracted, just simply bring your attention back into your physical body and breath and try to find those two opposing sensations or feelings or even notice two opposing thoughts. And without trying to banish one side of this balance, can you hold room for both? To have a distracted thought and to also just simply notice it and let that go. To feel tightness and resistance, but to offer softness and gentleness. to feel that you're starting to worry or you're getting anxious, but to also just breathe calmly. This is truly a superpower that we can start to connect into. Gently start to bring your left knee back through center and release the sole of your left foot down. Slide your right heel up so your right foot is planted. And then press into your feet and pick your hips up enough that you can slide your pillows or bolsters over to the left side of your mat. And then once they're out from underneath, just slowly lower your hips back down. Walk your feet wide and just gently drop your knees from left to right. Windshield wipering out your hips and any stickiness just lingering in your legs. The next time that your knees come up through center, heel toe your feet back to hip width distance. Press into the soles of your feet, pick your hips up and over to the right. Extend your left leg long. Bring your right knee in towards your chest just for a moment. Left hand will connect onto your right shin. So opposite hand and leg meet. Right arm extends out to a cactus or a T-shape. And then use your left hand to gently guide your right knee across your body into a twist. Now your props should be on this left side so that you can always land your inner thigh or knee or ankle onto. Left hand can stay rooted onto your thigh if that feels supportive but you can always take the left arm out and extend fingertips off to the side or overhead. If this pulls on your lower back, try lifting your hips further over to the right or come back through center and just bend both knees instead of left leg straight and drop your knees over to the left side. If it's comfortable for your head or neck, allow your gaze to gently drop over to the right. And then eyelids rest heavy so that you can bring your full awareness and intention into the experience of this pose within your body and within your heart. As humans, we have this tendency to group and label items 
and people and characteristics of our external world. And you may find as you move through this practice that you start to label poses as like or dislike, good or bad for your body, maybe even right or wrong. And these labels start to define our experience. And we focus only on one aspect of that label rather than the full continuum. And so when you start to notice this grouping or categorization of your thoughts, just simply start to redirect your attention to your breath, taking a big breath in, expand into the corners of your lungs. And then as you exhale, just drop the labels and expectations as you release the air out. Allow yourself to have a beginner's mind as you move through our time together to experience the enormity of this pose and this moment, rather than just focusing on one tiny aspect. Can you start to see things in a different perspective? Gently begin to turn your gaze up towards the ceiling. Slowly bring your right knee back over top of your rib cage. Keep your right knee bent and just place your right foot on the ground. And shift your hips back into the center of your mat. Left leg stays extended. Slowly drop your right knee out to the side for a reclined tree. Well, similar to your balancing tree pose in a yang practice, but almost like you've been toppled over and are just laying on your back. Bring your arms wherever is comfortable, whether that's over top of your belly and your heart or overhead or out to the side. If you need extra support, grab one of your pillows and just gently place it underneath your right knee or right thigh. When you start to sink back into the stillness of this pose, while also recognizing perhaps the busyness of your thoughts or your wandering mind, and simply hold space for both. To just observe these two differing qualities of this moment. You notice how all the sensation and the outer edge of your right hip has faded away, perhaps bringing with it new sensations or experience, or more of just a neutral experience 
of just simply pausing and laying in wait. Whenever you feel like the scales are getting tipped to one side of this balance, just take a deep breath and reset. Start to call in the side that's being neglected or that doesn't have as much importance or care. Find that balance between two extremes. Gently, you can start to bring your hand underneath your right thigh or knee. Bring your right knee up. Might feel nice to take a break and just bend both knees in towards your chest and give yourself a nice big hug. Maybe a gentle rock side to side. Or you can always plant your feet and gently move the knees to the left or to the right. In this transition, start to move your props or pillows over to the right side of your mat. And just do so really slowly, really gently. There's no rush. Once your props are placed beside your right hip and thigh, press into the soles of your feet, lift your hips up and over to the left and start to extend your right leg out straight. Draw your left knee in towards your chest so that your right hand can wrap on the outside of your shin or thigh. Left arm extends out long and slowly start to twist over towards the right side. Knowing that you can always readjust your props to make sure that both shoulder blades are rooted down. And maybe gaze this time falls over to the opposite side, over your left shoulder. Take a couple of deep breaths to just simply land in this pose. And allow your breath to bring you deeper and deeper within, in this observation of self. As humans, we are so used to exploring or chasing after extremes. We glorify busy as though it's an ideal state to be. And instead of being moderately busy, often we're running on empty, just trying to get through our days. Uh, 
On the other side, we can get stuck in apathy, the feeling of being stuck. We just need to do nothing. This practice isn't meant to be perfect stillness and emptiness. It's meant to be a space to connect more to that yin side of cooling and calming energy as you also acknowledge some of that yang energy. The point isn't to push out the other half of the symbol. It's that we can approach this yang energy of busyness or some of the power, the strength, the go, go, go with calm, with presence, maybe even with compassion or forgiveness for self or however you've been moving through life lately. Gently bring your chin back up through center. Slowly unravel until your left knee can come in towards your chest and then release your left foot down onto your mat. Okay. And shift your hips back into the middle of your mat so that hips and shoulders are square. And then recline tree on this side. Allow your left knee to softly drop out to the side, always optional to add props underneath your thigh to just give you a little bit more support. And allow the back of your head to root down into your mat or the earth. Notice the new experience and sensations of this new pose. Can you allow yourself to let go of where you were so that you can start to step into this present moment of what is currently a part of your experience, both body and mind? Soften into anywhere that you've started to add tension. Just calling in a little bit more of that yin relaxation. Yin unraveling.
gently start to guide your left knee back up through center and take any few movements that you need before we make our way off our back. So that might be knees into your chest and just massaging out your lower back or even feet planted and dropping your knees left and right. Optional to take full body stretch. Eventually, roll yourself over onto your right hand side for fetal position. And just allow your head to rest heavy into your right bicep. Notice how the start of this practice has felt for you. And often the uncomfortable parts of this practice are because we're so used to a particular energy that when we invite in the opposite, that we're not used to it and it really starts to tow our the line of our comfort zone that we've drawn around ourselves. So if you just start to notice where you feel anxious or where you start to drift away from this yin energy, can you let go of the judgments of that and just offer yourself the grace to recognize that you're just learning through this and just practicing a different way of being? Whenever you are ready, start to press yourself up. Left hand presses into the earth. And just turn yourself towards the top of your mat. Stack your bones and just take the next few moments to rinse out your spine. So you can send your hips back or forward. You can cat cow your spine or you can always do this in seated as well. Maybe hips move side to side, but this should feel essentially really, really nourishing for your body, especially after being on your back for a little bit of time. And then whenever you are ready, in the next few breaths, start to come back to a neutral spine. Make sure that your knees and big toes start to walk together. Okay, toes tucked under. And then sit your hips back towards your heels. Reach around behind you to tuck your pinky toes under. They like to be little escape artists. And then see how it feels to stack shoulders over hips, over feet. If this feels like a lot for your knees, walk your hands forward, lift up your hips, and then take a pillow behind your knees to give you some support. Always optional to just start to lean forward and hands can always come onto a block or a prop or even forearms, but still feeling that slight push back of hips towards heels. This pose really calls on us to find that duality of the practice. So close down your eyes and just start to feel into the sensation of your feet. For the majority of us, this is going to feel spicy. It's going to feel like a lot of sensation to just hold space for without fixing or forcing or controlling. And so I encourage you when your feet are starting to make your mind really busy and dense and saturated with thought and sensation, just take a deep breath in. And take a slow breath out. And notice how you have the capacity to just be. So let's just take a few more breaths together, inhaling through your nose. And exhaling out through your mouth. Just soften your shoulders, relax your hands. Inhale through your nose, feel your chest rise. 
and exhale out through your mouth. Gently let that release. Let's take three more breaths together. Allowing yourself to feel into the sensation, feel into maybe even some feelings of panic or when do we come out of this? And then to also just feel the calming energy of your breath. A reminder that you don't always have to react when things get uncomfortable, when things feel like they're coming at us, that we can just simply breathe. Finish out this last breath. And then start to walk your fingertips forward, slide your hands out in front of you. Untuck your toes. So the tops of your feet are going to come onto your mat and just pause for a moment. And start to sit your hips back to your heels again, this time now sitting onto the shoelace sides of your feet. Always optional to take a block or pillow underneath your seat if this is a lot for your knees to take some of that weight out of the joint. And then if you want to go a little bit deeper into this opening of tops of your feet, and toes, you can always start to walk your fingertips back. And you can just play with leaning into your hands or even floating your knees off of your mat. Make sure that there's no pulling into the fronts of your knees or hips. And if there is, you'll just slowly lower your knees down and walk your hands in closer. Notice how this is a different sensation, but it might be just as deep or intense. And can you just simply take five more breaths wherever you are? Hold space for the chaos and respond with the emptiness. This allows you to see both the busyness but then to offer yourself space. Gently start to walk your hands back in towards your hips if you were leaning back, knees lower down. You slide your hands forward to lift your hips over your knees and tabletop. And then tuck your right toes under and just extend your right leg back behind you. You can play with rocking forward and back, just creating some space into the back of your right leg. Spend a couple of breaths here. Then when you're ready, you can switch sides. Right knee comes in, left heel extends back, toes rooted to the earth. Just feel all of that sensation of flexion in your hips and knees and ankles release. You can come back to tabletop when you've completed that on both sides and then just shift your feet to either side so you can bring your feet around and in front. Okay. Start to bend your right knee in towards your chest and then pick up your right foot with your right hand and interlace your left fingers in between each of your toes. Okay, so it should kind of look a little funky and it might feel a little funky too. And you're just gonna start to draw circles. So you're gonna always cross this ankle over if you don't wanna hold it up with your right hand. So whatever's most comfortable. And you can point your feet, you can flex your toes. Just give your foot a little bit of love circling the ankle, creating some space in between each of your toes. This movement doesn't have to be anything special. 
And it just should feel like a gentle release for your foot. Feet are the foundation of our posture and they really do influence how our body feels throughout our day. So it is really important to give our feet a little love. Okay. And gently just start to unwind your fingertips from your foot. Cross your ankle if it isn't already. And then take your thumbs into the meaty portion of your arch and just start to run your thumbs from your heel all the way up towards the ball of your foot and just giving yourself a little bit of a foot massage. And it might not feel great right away, but know that this is just a little bit of fascia release really really helpful especially those of you that work into plantar fasciitis or you have a collapsed arch that feet can feel pretty sore at the end of the day or those of you working on your feet like nurses or servers just take a couple more breaths just kind of massaging out bottom of your foot And we'll gently start to find the other side. So you can use your hands to release across of your ankle and extend your right leg out. Bend your left knee in and pick up your foot, this time interlacing your right fingers in between your toes. And don't worry if it feels like your fingers don't want to go in there. Um, it can feel like that the first couple times that you come into this shape. So just start with the fingertips. And then you might work your way to the middle knuckle or towards the end of your fingertips. You're welcome to hold your leg up or you can just simply cross your left ankle over your right thigh. Okay. Pull your toes in towards your shin and then pull them away, pointing and flexing with your hand or start to circle through the ankle or toes. Just finding some movement that feels nourishing, remembering to be gentle. You may even close down your eyes if you notice that your gaze is going elsewhere. And especially if you haven't spent a lot of time on your feet, notice how this feels. Allow your gaze to go to this portion of your body and to just become aware of any tension that you're holding in your foot. So the last couple of moments of movement. And you can gently release the grip of your fingertips and just like you did on the other side, start to run your thumbs up the length of your planter of your foot. Don't be afraid to really dig in. You can always use knuckles if you're not getting quite enough. And just allow this to be a moment of self-love. So often we look at self-love as uh, very well-known practices, but even just giving ourselves a simple massage or caring for an area of our body, that in itself is an act of self-love. Of giving some gratitude to your feet for holding your weight throughout the day, for keeping you steady in some of the moments where the ground feels uncertain, or shaky, for really just carrying the load day to day. Just take a couple more breaths. Any little bits of your foot that you want to get into that you haven't yet. And then gently you can start to release your left foot out in front of you. Okay. Always optional to grab your pillows and place them over top of your thighs for extra support. Legs will stay long in caterpillar. Or some of you might find that your knees want to bend. So you can always take your pillows underneath your knees so you have a soft bend into the knees. And whenever you're ready, just start to drape yourself forward, belly, then heart, then head. And if you have props to hold up your head like a block, 
you're welcome to do so. You can just let your head hang heavy or you can always support your forehead and your palms bending into your elbows. You allow your breath to travel all the way down your spine towards your hips. Maybe all the way down your spine, down the backs of your legs. Not actually sending your breath there, but sending the intention of expansion of the inhale and of the softening of the exhale. Let your head hang a little bit heavier. It's really easy for us when we're comfortable with something to stay in that something even if it's not necessarily serving us. I know speaking to one of my friends recently, they said that they were just in this pattern of being busy and then taking a break and saying that they'd find more balance the next time and then going back to being so busy they didn't have any time for themselves and then taking a short break and it just became this endless cycle of craziness. The world that we live in is so yang in energy that it's become our normal. But it doesn't mean that comfortable or normal is balanced. And it doesn't mean that it's necessarily good for us. And so what I love about this yin practice is that even though it can be uncomfortable, is that it's starting to unwind the habits and patterns that we've fallen into over the years. And we start to show up for ourselves in all the ways that we've abandoned ourselves in the past. And we just offer a different perspective to still see the busyness, to still experience some of the emotions below the line, but to respond in a different way with kindness and gratitude and that cooling feminine energy to just kind of cool down the heat or the ferocity of the yang. And just take about five or so more breaths here and see if you can start to settle in almost like you're riding the waves of your inhales and your exhales. Allowing your joints to melt, soften, relax, head hangs heavier. And take your time to walk your hands alongside your body. Once you come up to a neutral spine, it might feel nice just to walk your hands back and maybe even gaze up. If you don't have a bolster underneath your knees, you can always start to bend your knees and plant your feet, walking your knees to the left and to the right. And then use these next few moments to transition deep down towards your mat, lowering onto a forearm at a time, and eventually bringing yourself into Shavasana. 
Now if you want extra support for the lower back, just bring your bolster underneath your knees. Feet can come out wide, toes turn to the side. Always optional to bend your knees and plant your feet if your lower back gets quite tight in Shavasana or really just any expression of this pose. Keep your palms to face open so that you are open to receiving the wisdom and guidance that your practice has offered you tonight. And then I wanted to close off our practice with a Cherokee tale that reminds us of the balance of the yin and the yang and the beauty of seeing this in a different culture and how this is just truly a universal truth of duality. Okay, just allow this story to wash over your body as you sink towards stillness and rest. So a young boy from the tribe is pulled aside by the chief. And the chief tells him, son, there is a war going on inside of me. And the same war is going on inside of every other person here. It is a war between the white wolf and the dark wolf. Now the dark wolf, he represents all of the evil the rage, the anger, the distrust, the resentment, the bitterness. And the white wolf represents the hope and the care and the love and the kindness. And so the little boy asks, well, which one will win? Now the answer most of us know to this story is whichever wolf you feed. However, the Cherokee tale actually goes a little bit differently in that you need to feed both in order for them to win. If you starve the dark wolf, he will always just be waiting around the corner nipping at your heels, waiting for a moment when you are so weak that it can attack and take over. Those moments when we are exhausted and we aren't our best selves and we start to dip below the line of emotions or behavior. Because we're starving this black wolf of its energy and its right to be seen and acknowledged. And at the same time, we need to remember to feed the good, to feed the compassion and understanding and the light, the love, the joy. And that when both wolves are fed equally, there no longer is a war. They no longer are fighting for your attention because they're both being acknowledged. And this is where we find peace, where we are able to acknowledge our thoughts that lie in the darker corners of our mind or the frustrations or the anxiety or the fear, especially. And then we simply respond with the white wolf, with the light, with the good, with the grace. I'll leave you here for a moment to just sit with that and I'll bring you out of Shavasana when we're ready to close off together.
to leave you here on your backs in Shavasana. So you can take as much time as you need to come out of this. You can just simply land your hands and gather them at heart center. Remember that you are a balance between both the dark and the light, between the strong and the soft, between the busy and the slow and to just tap into whatever you're feeling in a moment so that you can start to find the balance for that if it's becoming overwhelming. From the bottom of my heart, so much love and so much gratitude. Namaste.